over 12,000 years ago and this was this Avila area was the largest Chumash settlement north of Point Conception okay well you know they were had their Chumash villages and things were going along and then of course the Spanish showed up and um, that period lasted till the 1820s when it became the Mexican period and during the Mexican period but during the Spanish and Mexican period this was always a port and I've uncovered records of ships pulling into Avila really early as a matter of fact you know that if you know what the uh, Filipino galleon trades were where these galleons went from like San Blas in Mexico all the way across to the Philippines and then when they sailed back they would hit Northern California and that was uh, we're talking about late 1500 1590 ships from that trade came into Avila as a matter of fact they had natives from the Philippines who were called Luzon escaped from their ship and joined with the Chumash Indians. So can you believe that? Here's Filipinos with Chumash Indians here in Avila. Well, then things went along and still ships were coming in. And this was a stop for, uh, you know, in the two years before the mast era when everybody was trading in California hides, well, ships would come in here because there were big ranches here, right? There was the... The ranches that use this area were the Dana Adobe and Napomo, um, or the Dana Ranch, the Napomo Ranch. This was San Miguelito, Rancho San Miguelito. There was uh, other ranches in the Arroyo Grande area, and they would all bring their hides, or California dollars, to Pirate's Cove, which is about a mile away from here. And that's where the ships would come in once a year, like in two years before the mast and they would uh, trade their hides for goods that they needed, you know, thread, needles, all that stuff they couldn't produce here. Then, and also at that same, at this point right here, which we, they call different names, right now you call it Fossil Point, that used to be a point where the Chumash could do smoke signals all the way to Point Conception. See, if you look right there, past Point Saul, and past that, that's Vandenberg. And when those missiles take off, we can see them perfect from here. As a matter of fact, you can feel the rumble in Avila when those missiles take off. Okay, so they were sending smoke signals over there. And then also when the ship came into Pirate's Cove to let the ranchers know it was in, they would send smoke signals from right up there also. Okay. So things were going along and there was otter hunters which were these hunters that first were hunting beavers inland mountain men but they came out here to hunt otters and the reason why was you got $35 for an otter pelt but only five for a um, beaver pelt so otter hunters came out here and then ships would come down with the Russian American ships with Russian crews and Inuit Indians from Alaska would come down here and hunt otters, and they'd also hunt the local Indians, especially on the Channel Islands. You guys, I'm sure, know about, what was her name, Juana Maria, the last woman of San Nicolas Island. That's a whole fascinating story in itself, especially the guy that rescued her, Nidemer, which is down in your area towards Carpinteria. At any rate, so we were going along, 
Then, of course, General Fremont came through here with his buckskin army, and the war with Mexico started, and this, uh, this area became eventually, first in 1848 as a territory, then 1850 as a state, okay? So, there was still a lot of commerce, ships coming into port here, but where we really lucked out or didn't luck out, depending on your point of view, is 